Orthon is a well-nurtured small island where everything is run and controlled by chef. When you walk into Hawthorne, you see that everything has been chosen for a reason. The attention to detail is unparalleled. It's interesting because it's an experience, and all of us, other than Margot, really, are there for the experience of it. Food is theater. Food is comedy, food is drama, food is satire. And the idea that you're pairing that experience with the structure of a film made perfect sense to me. Early on, Mark Mylott, our director, and I latched onto the idea that Slowick is inspired by a landscape. In a sort of biome of culinary ideas. Right, like it functions like an Epicurean salon. Mm, no, I like biome better, I think. Every step of the way that you're walking through nature, it's been twisted or pulled into specific geometric shapes that would never exist were it not for human interference. The paths are lined with four tons of white limestone that meets black mulch. These things don't occur naturally in nature. They're high contrast, they're brutal. They really exemplify a man who has become so fascistic over his vision of the dining experience that he has bended the environment to his will. We are but a frightened nanosecond. Nature is timeless. We want to make it really uniquely Slowik's vision. But on the other hand, we recognize this as an opportunity to reference some of the famous restaurants and chef's choices around the world. And the restaurant itself is a high-end modernistic glass front looking out over the sea, open kitchen, so as you eat, you can see the chefs at work. Plating in five. Yes, yes, chef! I love you all. We love you too, chef! Rafe and I spoke about his costume. It was an evolution from what real chefs wear into what this person was doing, what, what this chef was all about. We shouldn't have any indication on his chef's uniform that he's anything other than ordinary. It should be like priest or surgeon. We did away with any embellishments, any little vanity, insignia, anything. I told you who I am. I'm Julian Slowick, and I'm the chef here. Now, who are you? Margot is an enigma, and she's supposed to be. And I think something that I enjoy is I can see the parallels with acting. In a sense, what you see of Margot is what she wants you to see. This is what she's selling, and this is the character that she's selling. We didn't want a stereotypical portrayal of what people think an escort dresses or looks like. It's the balance of the products. You need the mouthfeel of the mignonette. Please don't say mouthfeel. Tyler, he's a foodie. He's very enthusiastic and loves food, thinks he knows a lot about it, has been kind of corresponding with Chef Slowick, and is almost a disciple of his, I would say. He's a fervent believer in everything he says. I really wanted him to look like he put a lot into this. His suit is custom made, this beautiful Italian wool. So he's put in time, effort, money. This is next level is badassery. To make this amazing for himself. Tyler, you cannot speak to me that way. Actually, I can because ding dong, I'm the one who's paying, so maybe shut up and eat. Oh, oh my God. He's under all these delusions of who he is, and he's, he's a phony and a fake in many ways, and he gets proven to be that. Oh my god. Also, is a very enigmatic character. So once I put on the costume, it just changed my demeanor. You will eat less than you desire and more than you deserve. She is almost like the muscle behind Chef. No! She's not like any head of the house that we've ever met before. I really wanted her to stand out. It felt like I had a corset on. My shoes made me walk a certain way. My hair was pulled up so tight. I take care of the customers so that chef can take care of the menu. She maintains her composure under all circumstances. Stop! Following through on Chef Slowick's plan. Please hold still. <laughs> On set together. I think Mark Mylod has created a great atmosphere of an ensemble, a company, all enjoying each other's work and appreciating each other. I had this 
approach based on Robert Altman's approach, his kind of semi-improvisational approach and that looseness and everybody being in character all the time. Off to South Africa and talk about how racism is not so cool. I don't think you can go to South Africa with a DUI. I didn't come from a background of improv, and so I've learned it watching people who are really, really brilliant at it. You just never know where you're going to end up. <laughs> <laughs> He's wonderful, especially at finding those moments of messiness. He makes it feel more like as if you were in a real dining room where people were really eating and there are different conversations happening at every table. I specifically shot the film so that any spontaneous moment was covered by two cameras so that we could take it as a whole and not have to manipulate it with other takes. Of course it's my fault, bro. I'm an asshole. We're pathetic, aren't we? Oh, oh my god, dude. Somebody shoot us. The nuances, the comedic nuances, and also the sadness. The, the sadness. Warmth. It's so cool to watch someone just knock it out of the park yeah. and communicate the thing that you wanted communicated. All the actors have done that. We're eating the ocean. We're eating the ocean. Yeah. Satire is exposing human folly and vanity through humor. You'll be given a 45 second head start if they do catch. <laughs> okay. We can see the mirror that satire is holding up to our world. However, it also allows you to laugh at it. Oh, everyone dying was my pitch, actually. Super proud of it. Because you are allowed to laugh, the, the underlying messages can kind of be massaged in there a little bit easier, so whereby at the end of this film, people will sit there and, and be left with this feeling of they enjoyed it, but also they'll be sitting there and wondering, you know, which of these crimes are they perhaps guilty of? You failed, and you've bored me. And the worst part is, I'm still fucking hungry. <laughs>